Now we're going to look at a very important class of problem, and, and that's basically dipoles and the effect of a dipole in an electric field, in this case a uniform electric field. Now, dipoles will be important to us when we study magnetism later in the year because uh, magnetism involves, always involves uh, dipole uh, effects, and we'll see more about that, and the mathematical structure uh, has similarities to it, so this is very important. Dipoles, by definition, have equal positive and negative Qs. That, that's important. They have equal and positive negative Qs, meaning that if we had a polar situation where maybe, for example, you don't need to write this down, but maybe, for example, uh, if this was negative 10 coulombs, if we had a positive charge over here of plus 20 coulombs. Uh, that is not a dipole. That's polarization. It's polarized, but it is not a dipole. So, you, again, you don't need to put that in your notes. Don't put it in your notes. Let's erase that. All right. Dipoles are separated by a distance uh, d. So, this distance is the distance d that separates the dipole. And we will talk more about the meaning of it, but for right now, the, just the definition of the dipole moment vector P. So this red vector P that I have drawn in here will be very important to us. So this red vector P, by definition, three equal signs equals the charge. We said What is said to be the charge of the dipole. Charge on the dipole is the magnitude of either one of the Q's. Uh, certainly not 2Q and definitely not 0 times the distance d. And again, we'll talk more about the meaning of that in a couple of seconds here. Uh, by definition, the vector, uh, the p vector and the d vector always go from negative to positive. I always remember that as being the opposite of the electric field. The electric field between a positive and negative would go from positive to negative. And of course, from chemistry, I hope your chemistry teachers taught you that water is an example of an electric dipole. A diatomic molecule has a center of charge distribution. So this goes kind of back to our center of mass type of concept. So those two plus two plus Qs has like a center of charge distribution plus two Q, which I put right here. The electron cloud will have a charge distribution negative 2q somewhere over here. Water is a polar molecule. There's a dipole moment vector for water and you don't need to memorize it. It will be given to you, but I have it written here for your reference should you need it. Uh, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 30 and look at the units. P equals Q coulombs times D meters, coulomb meters. All right, let's get to it. Let's see what the meaning, what's this dipole vector and this dipole thing all about. Well, as it says here, we're going to talk in a moment about the torque on a dipole. But before we even go into calculating the torque, let's understand why torque is going to be important to us. Well, if we put this dipole down in a uniform electric field, so our electric field is here going from positive to negative. It's uniform because I see equally spaced straight lines. If we look at the force acting on this dipole, we get these two light blues, right? The positive is pulled in the direction of the electric field. The negative is pulled in the direction opposite to the field. So dipoles always want to rotate in electric fields. So even without torque, we can see that if the center of mass is nature's point of rotation, the dipole, just like a water molecule, will have a center of mass point that this dipole will want to rotate in the presence of the electric field. So now that we know it rotates, let's calculate the torque to see how strongly it rotates. Remember, torque equals I alpha, right? So put that in here. We're not really going to use the I alpha for this course, but from mechanics, we remember that torque equals I alpha. So the strength of that, that rotation, the angular acceleration, is dependent on the torque. Well, I hope we can follow through pretty readily the math that is shown here. Torque equals R cross F. Remember that. And remember the fact that our right-hand rule applies. So whether you use the three fingers, like it's shown down here, or I tend to use the curl, that torque equals R is our vector A, 
f is our vector b, and our thumb gives us the n hat vector. So your thumb, if you want to put that in here, your thumb is always the n hat vector for our torque. That's our vector answer. Here we can see the purple r is half the distance d, so that's why I have the purple r here as half the distance d. f, right, is QE, so I have it all color-coded here for us. Uh, notice we had two f's, one, two. So that is the two down here. So that check is due to those two checks up top the two forces, and the sign of the angle between R and F as drawn from a common origin. So this actually ends up being somewhat important to us. The, that R cross F from a common origin gives us an angle, a pink angle theta here, all right? And when we see how our variables play out, right, we get a QD, right? Torque has a QD in it. That's a vector P. We still, have, of course, have the vector E. So now we can rewrite our R cross F as P cross E, and what's really important is to make note, or to absolutely accept, that the angle theta here is the same angle theta in the R cross F. So that's why the cross product can be rewritten as P cross E. You will not need to go through this derivation. So you will not, either for our test or for the AP test, have to do the derivation of P cross C, but I think it is helpful to understand where the equation comes from when applying it. So torque equals P cross E. P, by definition, is QD, always going. The P vector always goes, right, from negative to positive, and as it says here, maybe the most important thing is this one down here, that without any calculation or real um, deep thought, you know that the dipole vector will always want to try and align with the electric field, and we're going to talk more about that as we go along as well. So take a moment, get all your annotations here, and we will be moving on with dipoles.